How's it going ladies and gents, Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. In this video, we walk through stolen device protection in iOS 17.3. Plus, we showcase other new features, including Hotel Airplay, Apple Music Collaborative Playlist, Emoji Reactions in Apple Music, and more. So briefly taking a look at the build number and the version number you can see in settings general iOS 17.3 and if we tap the iOS version you'll see the corresponding build number which is 21D50. So if you were running the RC version this is the same version. So let's talk about the headline feature which is stolen device protection. So if we go to settings and then we go to face ID and passcode we enter our passcode and then we scroll down, we'll see right there, stolen device protection. By default, you see that it is off. So stolen device protection adds another layer of security to your iPhone in two basic ways. Number one, it requires you to use Face ID to access certain settings, such as the ability to change your passcode or the ability to change your Apple ID password, or even disabling stolen device protection itself. The second way it protects you is that even if you were to use Face ID to unlock your phone, if your iPhone is not in a familiar location that your iOS device recognizes, like home or at work, it will institute a one hour delay before it gives access to those sensitive areas of your iPhone, such as resetting the passcode or resetting the password. So now let's just walk through stolen device protection, setting it up, and let me show you how it works. So the first thing you wanna do is just simply turn the feature on, and you can do that simply by tapping turn on protection, and it's on just like that. Now, if I wanna turn off, since I've already authenticated and I'm in a familiar location, I just simply tap turn off protection, and it can verify with either face ID or your passcode, just like that. So now I'm gonna to try to change my password with stolen device protection enabled, but keep in mind, I'm now in a familiar location. All right, so I'm gonna to go to my account settings, go to sign in and security, and then tap where it says change password. Now I'm not gonna look at the face ID sensor and you'll see it asks me for my passcode like normal. But the reason why it allows me to use my passcode is because I'm in a familiar location. In previous versions of iOS, it didn't matter where you were, you could use your passcode to access these sensitive areas. And that's a problem because what would happen is that thieves would learn your passcode, they would steal your iPhone, and then they would go in and change your password, change your passcode, etc. So let me show you how with stolen device protection, now your location plays a major part in protecting your phone. So if we go to settings, privacy and security, location services, you'll see all the various applications that have access to your location. And of course you can globally disable location services, but if we scroll all the way down, what we wanna access is system services because within system services, you'll find something called significant locations. And that includes locations that you frequent often, such as home or work. So your iPhone knows whether or not you're in one of these significant locations. So what we'll show you here is you could see that the iPhone system services is using your location right now to know where you are. So I'm going to go in and actually disable these significant locations. So I'm gonna just put my passcode in and you can see I have 120 records, 120 significant locations there. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna disable significant locations and then show you the difference when trying to go in and changing your password or your passcode. So let's go ahead and disable significant locations. Select turn off, and now significant locations are disabled. So we keep all the rest of the location access enabled, but just disable significant locations, including frequently accessed places like your home or your work. So we're gonna go all the way back, and now we're going to try to change the password again. But the difference is from the iPhone's perspective, you're no longer in a significant location like work or home. So stolen device protection is going to get a little bit more aggressive here. So I'm gonna choose change password, but not look at the face ID sensor. You can see it's trying to authenticate. Let's try again. And now notice face ID is required. 
So it's not going to allow you to use your passcode, which a thief may have stolen, to access sensitive data like being able to change your password or passcode. So the only option, just to tap OK, because from the iPhone's perspective, you're not in a significant location and it's not going to allow you to access these sensitive areas without using your biometric authentication, in this case, Face ID. But that's not all. Notice what happens when I do use Face ID. So I'm going to tap change password again, but this time I'm going to allow it to see my face and unlock using Face ID. So change password, looking at the sensor, now you get this, security delay required to change passwords. So even if you use Face ID, if you're not in that familiar location, iOS, in an effort to protect you, will institute a security delay that lasts for one hour. And you will still be able to access your phone during this delay, but you're not going to be able to access these sensitive areas like being able to change your password or being able to change your passcode until you're in a familiar location. But what if you try to just go in and disable stolen device protection, then what? Well, only one way to find out. So let's go back to settings, face ID and passcode. We'll put our passcode in there and then we'll scroll down and try to disable stolen device protection. And I'm not in a familiar location now. So I'm not going to allow face ID to see me. And you're going to see face ID is required. So. This time, just like we did before, I'm going to allow Face ID to see my face. So we're gonna to try to turn off protection again. And there it is, that one hour delay notification. So even if a thief was able to somehow gain access to your biometric data, there's still gonna be that one hour delay before they can make any changes. But what if I try to turn off the passcode? So I tap it. I don't look at the Face ID sensor. Try Face ID again and I get the same message, face ID required. This time I'm going to look at the sensor, allow face ID to authenticate, but bam, yes indeed, same one hour security delay. Now, this time I'm going to go ahead and tap where it says start security delay so you can see what happens. So you get a little countdown timer, time remaining, you'll get a notification when the security delay ends. So indeed, after that hour elapses, you'll get a time sensitive notification that the security delay has ended. And it'll link you directly to the area you were trying to access. Now, the thing is, if you go back to your significant location like home, the security delay will actually end earlier and you'll be notified. Let me show you. Now to simulate this, I'm gonna go back to privacy and security and then go back to location services and then scroll back down to significant or system services first and then significant locations. Go ahead and authenticate here. And now I'm going to re-enable significant locations, basically simulating me arriving back at home because I'm actually home. And once iOS recognizes this, it'll send you a time sensitive notification telling you that the security delay has ended. So any second now we should receive that alert. And there it goes, security delay ended. You can now continue with settings. You tap on that, it'll take you to the settings area that you were trying to access, in this case, Face ID and passcode, to disable the passcode. So hopefully that explainer of stolen device protection helps you to understand what the feature does and why it's so useful. But basically it prevents a, a thief from learning your passcode and then going in and immediately changing sensitive data like your password. You definitely don't wanna do that because that has all sorts of negative repercussions. But not only is this feature useful, iOS 17.3 contains over a dozen new security fixes. So that's definitely a reason why you would wanna upgrade as well. But let's talk about some of the other features because there's more. AirPlay Hotel Support is finally launching in iOS 17.3. This was a feature tease back at WWDC and it's just now launching. But the long and short of it is this. Have you ever been at a hotel and, and thought to yourself, wouldn't it be nice if I could just grab my iPhone and just airplay content directly to this television instead of using this awful interface? <laughs> I don't know how many times I've thought that. I've actually brought my Apple TV to a hotel before because I just wanted to have an easy way to airplay. Well now, thanks to iOS 17.3, that is going to be a possibility, eventually. So Apple and LG have worked together to bring this feature to hotel rooms for brands like Kempton and IHG. So you'll be able to basically use your iPhone, scan a QR code, 
and easily airplay with no logins, no passwords to remember, no separate apps to download. It is super simple and super easy. It's really the simplest way that guests will be able to access their personal entertainment and their applications on the big screen in their hotel room. Now this will probably take a little while for it to actually be available within hotel rooms, but again, those brands, Kempton, IHG, and Hotel Indigo as well. So I can't wait to try this feature out. I think this is gonna be a great thing. Hopefully it rolls out to every hotel eventually. You'll notice in iOS 17.3, when you go to settings, general, Apple care, and warranty, it now displays all of the devices linked to your Apple ID instead of just the local devices like a pair of AirPods, for instance. And these devices are ordered by warranty. So at the very bottom, you'll find devices that are expired. As you scroll up, you'll see limited warranty items. And then you'll see at the very top, your Apple Care items. Of course, at the very, very top, you'll see the actual device that you're using, regardless of its warranty state. And you'll also find a new Unity Bloom wallpaper option in iOS 17.3. So let's take a closer look. I'm gonna tap on that and you can see various colors that you can configure for Unity Bloom. I'm gonna scroll to the left. There's Unity, there's red, there's green, there's multicolor, and there's black. But what's really interesting about this is that it's dynamic. You get a new look each time you lock and unlock your device. And I think that's pretty cool. I'd like to see more wallpaper do that. Now, Apple Music Collaborative Playlist was a feature that was supposed to launch, I believe, with 17.2, but it got pulled. And now it's here available in 17.3. So basically, I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna create a new playlist and show you how it works. All right, so we have our playlist here. And of course, you have the suggested songs option, which is a feature I really like. This isn't a new feature, but I do like it, being able to quickly add songs to your playlist with just a tap and you can refresh as well. But that's not what I wanna show you. I wanna show you the collaboration functionality that is now present in 17.3. So in the upper right hand corner, you'll see a collaboration button and it looks like two little people there. You just tap on that button and that allows you to start setting up this collaborative playlist. So first of all, you wanna invite people to join the playlist. So there are two ways to invite ones. You can do so using a link or you can do so using a QR code. You can also choose to approve each collaborator or allow all collaborators with the link to join. So in this case, I guess we'll go ahead and enable approval just so I can show you the process. So let's start collaborating. Just tap that button there. And in a second, you should see a share sheet that allows you to share the link with ease. So there we go. So we can easily copy that link, share it with another person via an application. You can paste it directly in messages like that. And this is what it looks like when you send that link. So you'll see the name of the playlist. You'll see the playlist owner. You'll see a button to join the playlist. And there's also a play button there as well. Now, if I tap the little collaboration button, you'll see the option to share via a link. So that's basically the same share sheet that we just showed you. And there's also the ability to generate a new link. So Links expire after seven days, but if you want to prevent people from joining with the current link, you can just generate a new one with ease. But if you don't want to use a link, there's also the option of simply using a QR code. So you see a little QR code button there, just tap that. And there is the QR code that other users can scan to join your playlist. So I'm going to just do that right now. Let's grab our other phone and we'll use our camera app and just tap right here and that will start the process. Now you'll see a notification saying approval needed to join. However, the playlist will be added to that user's library, regardless if they're approved or not, once they request to join. So they can't go in and change things with the playlist, but they will get that playlist on their device once they request, just like this. So you can see the request in progress, and as you can see, the playlist is added to the user's library. Now, if you tap the collaboration button, you see the little dot next to it, indicating that approval is still pending. So you can see that pending approval, you can remove that join request if you wanna do that. But now here on my main device, I'm gonna go ahead and approve, just tap the little green check mark, and there we go. So that request has been approved. I can remove manually any user I want, or I can stop collaboration, or I can disable approved collaborators or re-enable that if I wish to do so. All right, so now that we have approved that user, we've approved Ducky, so on Ducky's device, you'll see now they can start adding music if they wanna do that. 
I'm gonna tap the collaboration button. You can just see here, you can leave that collaboration if you want to. But now let's talk about the fun part, and that involves adding music, removing music, rearranging music for any user that's an improved collaborator. So I just added one there. You'll see it appear on the other device just like that. And you can see a little avatar of who added that particular track to the playlist. I'm gonna add another. You'll see that show up as well. You can also, like I said, rearrange tracks if you wish to do that. Anyone who's a part of the collaboration can do so. So let's go ahead and go up to edit mode and we'll see the ability. You can also remove, by the way. So let's go ahead and actually remove a song. And it's not gonna take effect yet until I tap done. We'll go ahead and rearrange and then tap done and watch what happens here on this device. It removes that song, rearranges just like that. And of course, on this device, I can add or remove songs as well just like that and rearrange. So this is the really cool thing about this is that you get a bunch of friends together. They, they're able to add or remove songs, rearrange songs in this playlist. And you're really able to learn about some new music in a very fun and interactive way. Now, what if people are causing problems? Well, if you go in and you tap on the playlist and the collaborators, you can actually tap the little ellipsis button. You can block a user if you want to do that. That's a pretty extreme uh, thing to resort to because that will basically make it so that user cannot find you at all anymore. And this can be good to get rid of users that want to cause problems. Maybe they try to delete your entire playlist or whatever the case may be. Now, another thing you'll notice on the now playing screen, you'll actually see the name of the user. Uh, in this case, Ducky Benjamin, who added this song to the playlist. And as you skip ahead and look at the up next, you can see all the little avatars next to the songs, depending on who added that particular song to the playlist. You can see I skip ahead. It changes just like that. Now, another really cool feature is emoji reactions in Apple Music collaborative playlist. So on the now playing screen, you tap the little emoji button. You can quickly add an emoji and then you can even click the little plus button to add any of the emoji that's in the emoji library. So this is a really great way to display your particular feelings about a song. Maybe someone added a song you had never heard of and you just think it's fire. So you add a fire emoji just like that. And if you tap on it, you can see who added those various emojis. You can change your emoji if you want, want to do so just like that as well. Now, the cool thing, you can see those emoji right within the actual playlist. You tap on them and you can view the details. One of the things that I really like about emoji reactions is the animation that occurs when you either submit an, an emoji reaction like this. So you see that little animation? But that will also occur when you start playing a song where another user has added an emoji to it. So I'm gonna select this song here, open it up, and you can see the emoji reaction that I added from that other user right there. This sort of reminds me of SoundCloud, how you could actually add like comments directly on certain parts of a song. Uh, this isn't that deep though because this is basically just applies to the overall track. But hopefully in the future, you'll be able to add these emoji reactions and maybe even comments directly on specific parts of a song. Either way, it's a really cool feature and it adds that extra little bit of spice to collaborative playlists. So iOS 17.3 is headlined by stolen device protection and rightfully so, it solves a real security issue and it does so with relative ease. But definitely don't sleep on the new collaborative playlist in Apple Music and the new emoji reactions in Apple Music because they're both super fun features. Folks, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. If you like videos like this, be sure to check out these other videos for more. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.